brothers and sisters, we've entered the great month of May, which is this month in which the church asks us to remember in a very particular way our Blessed Mother. So it's a good month where we could think of maybe making a special pilgrimage uh, to a special shrine wherever we live, or maybe to just a church that carries and honors the title of some aspect of Our Lady's life, like the Church of the Assumption or Church of Our Lady of Good Counsel, whatever it is. The Immaculate Conception in Trinidad, we have the, the, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. And so we some church where we can go out of our way, maybe it's just to pay some kind of respect uh, to our Blessed Mother and to honor the fact of how involved she is in our spiritual life and our spiritual formation in Christ as we journey through life to restore in us that most beautiful um, image of God that we were created in that has been marred by by sin, you know, that, that the, the image and likeness of God that we have been made in, as I've said. And so, Our Lady, there's a real um, mystery around Mary and her role in salvation. Uh, the church from very early on, from the earliest Christians have honored in a particular way, the Blessed Virgin Mary and have realized that she herself is actively caught up, as I said earlier on, in our formation in Christ. And so she, like St. Bernard would call her the great aqueduct, you know, through which grace has come to us because Jesus Christ came through our ladies, yes. And, and Mary's own humanity gave Christ his humanity because Christ did not have an earthly father. So all of his, just on the biological level, all of his own um, <laughs> DNA would have been completely Marian in that sense, completely uh, Mary. And in that sense, you know, we are living Christ. So in that sense, to extend it as an analogy, you know, that um, to to be Christ, to be one with Christ, is to be completely one with Mary herself. And so Our Lady, um, in saying yes, opened the door to, to the arrival of Christ. And there's like a spiritual law that is bound up with Christ and how he comes to us. And it is always through Our Lady in that sense. She's permanently united to her son, permanently united as a conduit of grace herself, um, being the first proper tabernacle of the true and real presence of Christ in in her womb. Uh, she's a, therefore a great image of the church. You know, the church can look to Our Lady and, and see in Our Lady its perfect model. And each one of us could look to Our Lady and see the most perfect disciple of Jesus. You know, the one who totally opened wide her heart and her body to, to the word of God. And this, this is a kind of a model of Holy Communion, like when we receive Jesus in the sacrament, um, which is truly and entirely him. Um, we receive him into our bodies, like, like in a special way, like how Mary had that privilege for those nine months in the most intense communion that she had with Christ in her, um, as, as Christ grew in her womb. And so this month, I just want to propose to us that we, we also think of the message that she gave in Fatima. When she appeared in Fatima in 1917, she spoke a lot about her immaculate heart being a refuge. And I was passing through an airport once and I, this idea came to me, you know, and I thought, you know, just like on the very physical, in the physical world, you know, whether you're at a beach or you're at a beautiful far, forest or mountaintop or, or wherever you are, wherever you are, shapes the experience of of life there. You know, I mean, the sunset gives you an experience um, that, that, you know, another setting would not give you, you know, so things are particular in that sense. And so the same thing is true in the spiritual world. And they, Mary's heart is a real spiritual place. Um, we can enter it by desiring to go there. Um, we can call her and we can ask her to unite our hearts to her heart. And already we are already united all together in the church. In baptism, we are all united together. Um, we, we form one mystical person in Christ. And so we already from baptism, we have a special bond with Our Lady. And we have a connection to her, a true connection, a real connection. It's not a nice metaphor. It's a real connection. And so we can ask Our Lady to, 
to bring us into her heart. Pope John Paul says that when we pray the rosary, it's like we're transported to Mary's side. And and I would like to just say that, that that's a kind of a great message to point out even a, a, another reality that not only are we transported to Mary's side, but she we're kind of given her heart when we pray to her. We She can really unite us with her heart and we gain the merits and the graces of her heart. And there's no heart like Mary in loving Christ. No one loved Jesus as much as Mary did because she was his mother. He was, she was his mother. <laughs> and, you know, she was perfect, full of grace. And she, er, as she sang in the Magnificat in the scriptures, my soul magnifies the Lord. So we could really go into the immaculate heart of Mary as a real spiritual place in prayer. And there we experience God magnified.